How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be showing you guys how to get the best FPS possible for Apex Legends Escape. Throughout this video we're going to be going over optimizations, techniques and all of the in-game settings you're going to need to improve your FPS to the best possible on your machine, reduce your input latency and also gain a competitive advantage from dialing in some of your settings and getting a much better visual quality for an overall better experience across the board. Regardless of how old, new, good or bad your system is, helping your game feel faster, smoother, snappier and way more responsive. If you do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. And let's get straight on into the video. But before we jump into that, a message from today's video sponsor. NordVPN is a virtual private network service which can help you browse online on both public and private Wi-Fi by routing your connection online through one of the virtual private networks. NordVPN features over 5,100 servers in 60 countries with unlimited bandwidth with incredibly fast download speeds. They have a strict no logs policy so you can browse safely and securely with complete peace of mind and 24 seven live chat support. Also features a 30 day money back guarantee so if you're not happy with the service there is no risk to signing up. Nord also offer a password manager known as Nord Pass to help you keep your passwords safe and secure and a file encryption service known as Nord Locker. Get more from your internet connection and stay safe online today and take advantage of the Cyber Month deal where you can get a two year plan plus an additional month with a huge discount using the link in the description down below or go to nordvpn.com slash pangino. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. First of all we want to ensure that Apex Legends is installed to our C drive or the drive on your PC which Windows is installed to. Assuming that Apex Legends runs on a modified version of the Source Engine, Source Engine games actually do prefer being installed as close to the Windows installation as possible. This can sometimes fix bugs and issues in which you may be experiencing. If you want to change where your game is installed to, right click on Apex Legends with inside of Steam, navigate down to Properties, go to the Local Files tab and at the bottom you'll find Move Install Folder. You'll then have a bunch of options available to you as to what drive you want to move this installation over to. If you don't have this currently installed to your C drive, select Select Drive C, then select Move. After a few short moments this should then complete the update and the installation will be completely moved over. With that out of the way, for a quick optimization to ensure that you aren't running any background tasks that don't need to be open, take yourself down to the task bar, right click and open up Task Manager. For those of you running on Windows 11, press Ctrl, Alt and Delete on your keyboard and open up Task Manager with inside of this page. Go up to the Startup tab. This is then going to provide you with a list of all of the programs which are automatically going to boot and open whenever you turn on or log into your PC. You want to have this list completely minimized as you'll still have access to all these programs but you don't want them opening automatically as every single program running on your PC in the background is taking up CPU cycles, adding input latency and taking away from performance. Once you've located a program that doesn't need to open when you log into your PC, select the program, go down to the bottom right, then select disable. Then repeat that step for all of the programs you know you don't need. Piggybacking off of that step, it's always best practice to also navigate to the bottom right hand side to your task icon tray. This is where you can see all of the programs in which you're currently running on your PC. So again, if any of those pesky programs have stayed open or you have things in the background open that you don't need when you're playing games, before you boot into any demanding game, right click on them and exit out of the programs. For this next step, we're going to be going back into the game files themselves and applying a quick optimization to the game. Take yourself into Steam, right click on Apex Legends, go down to Properties. Navigate over to Local Files once again, go over to Browse. Navigate down to R5 Apex exe right click select properties in here go to the compatibility tab we used to have disable full screen optimizations checked it's actually no longer recommended to have this checked so deselect this go down to change high dpi settings and make sure the override high dpi is also selected once that's selected select ok make sure disable full screen isn't press apply press ok whilst we are still inside of this folder it's a great opportunity to quickly grab the directory double click highlight all the way from the right hand side to the left select copy we can then go ahead and exit out of this folder. With that done, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in GPU space settings. Click on the graphics settings tab. First of all, navigate down to browse, go to the navigation bar at the top of this explorer folder, remove anything with inside of here, right click, select paste, then enter. Go down to r5apex.exe and add the application. Navigate down to Apex, select it, select options, then select high performance under your graphics preference, then select save. With that done and out of the way, if you do have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling with inside of here, it's actually recommended to turn this off if you're on a super high-end PC such as an RTX 30 series graphics card. If you're on an RTX 20 series or older or lower end GPU, I would recommend actually having this on. Now for those of you that do play Apex through Steam, we can apply a few quick options to Steam to lower its CPU usage in the background. Go to the top left hand side, select Steam, go down to settings. Go 
down to your library section and apply the options for low bandwidth mode, low performance mode, and also I like to disable community content. Once that's been set, select OK. We can then apply an additional setting with inside of Steam by navigating down to friends and chat. Go to the top right hand side to the settings cog, then navigate down to friends list, then turn off the option for enable animated avatars and avatar frames. For any of you watching that are using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or any other Chromium based browser, it's definitely recommended to ensure that you have this setting on as Google Chrome will actually run your Chrome extensions and plugins in the background even when the browser is closed. For this, take yourself to the top right hand side to the three dots. Go down to your settings page, go to advanced on the left hand side, and then go down to system. On the system tab, you'll then be able to see continue running background apps when Chrome is closed. You want to have this option turned off. Starting off with this step, we first of all need to install our brand new launch options. For this, take yourself inside of Steam, go to Apex, right click, select properties. Under launch options, make sure that you delete any and all launch options which are currently existing with inside of it. Take yourself to the description down below, find the launch options to copy and paste, right click, select copy. Go back inside of Steam, right click inside of the blank box, select paste, and your new launch options have now been enabled. After this, we can now set up an auto exec with inside of the game, which can automatically execute some of our game settings upon boot, so we don't have to tweak the game every single time we boot the game. For this, take yourself to the local files tab in Steam, go to browse. Go inside of the CFG folder. Once inside of the folder, right click in a blank space, then select new text document. We're going to name this text document auto exec. Once that's been created, press enter. Double click inside of the text document in which we just created. At this point, take yourself to the description down below where you'll be able to find three Google Drive links. One for the auto exec, one for the video config, and another for settings. Click on the auto exec Google Drive link. Take yourself to the top of the text document, highlight and select all the way down to the bottom, then press Ctrl and C on your keyboard to copy all of the commands. Once copied, go back to the text document, right click, select paste. Once that's done, go to file, save as. Under file save as, we need to take the .txt off of autoexec and replace this with .cfg. Then go down to save as type, select all files, then hit save. Once that's been done, we can exit out. Take ourselves down to the bottom left hand side this time, type in percentage users percentage enter. Click on the user profile in which you're currently using on your PC. Inside of here, go to the saved games folder, respawn, apex, local. We're now going to apply the config settings for the video.txt, so double click on video config.txt. We're then going to remove any and all data with inside of here by highlighting, then hitting backspace. Go inside of the description down below, this time selecting the video config.txt, and just like we did with the auto exec, go all the way from the top to the bottom, control and C to copy all of the text, go back to the text document, right click, select paste, file, save. Then last but not least, we now need to do this for the settings.cfg. To open up the settings.cfg, go to the bottom left, open up a blank notepad. Drag the settings.cfg into the notepad, and again, all the way from the top to the bottom, remove any and all information. Use the description down below to find the settings.cfg file. Inside of here, once again, all the way from the top to the bottom, control and C. Go back to our settings.cfg notepad, right click, paste, file, save. We can now boot into the game to finalize all of our in-game settings and dial them in for our personal preference. Take yourself to the bottom right hand side to your game settings, select settings and we can start off with gameplay. Under here if you're not using any advanced options for a competitive advantage I'd recommend changing your damage numbers to stacking. Make sure that you turn off usage sharing and turn on your performance display. Underneath these settings you can also find the options for colorblind mode which can change some of the colors within inside of the game which could help you with your personal preference. With those set take yourself to the mouse and keyboard section and input all of your old values in which we backed up earlier. It's also recommended with inside of here to ensure that mouse acceleration is turned off. Display mode should be set to full screen for every single person watching this video. We're going to come back to resolution at the end of this video, so leave this default for now. Field of view should be set to 90 for the best FPS possible, but for me personally, I prefer 110. Sprint view shake should be set to minimal. VSync disabled for everyone. If you do have the option for NVIDIA Reflex available, set this to enabled plus boost. If you notice that you do experience any stuttering with inside of the game, try turning this all the way to disabled, as this will then default back to the NVIDIA ultra low latency mode we set earlier. Anti-aliasing, I'm going to recommend setting this to none but some of you may want this on. Texture streaming budget is going to be set as per your system specs. For those of you that want the best competitive advantage possible alongside the best performance, leave this at none as this will use some of the custom settings in which we set. For those of you that are running on a high-end system but want better looking textures with inside of the game, set this to insane 8 gig. Otherwise, you want to set your texture streaming budget to one setting lower than your GPU's VRAM in which you can find under task manager, GPU, and you can find your memory here. Texture filtering by linear, ambient occlusion quality disabled, sun shadow coverage, 
Coverage and Detail both set to low, Spot Shadow Detail disabled, Volumetric Lighting disabled, Dynamic Spot Shadows disabled, Model Detail is going to be kept at low, as our Texture Streaming budget is going to give us those nice looking textures, Effects Detail low, Impact Marks disabled and Ragdoll set to low. Select Apply, go to the Game Modes and at this point I'd recommend booting into the Firing Range. As you can see for me, in this area I'm getting anywhere from 140 to 180 frames per second and that's mainly because I'm recording. This is where we're going to go in and now tweak our in-game resolution. For this take yourself to Settings, take your resolution down by one setting, select Apply. Just by going down one resolution we've been able to achieve about a 20 to 40 FPS increase just from that setting. Again you might want to go down lower and lower and lower but this will depend on your personal preference for visual quality and the FPS in which you are looking for. This now moves us over to the BIOS section. This isn't going to be a section of the video for everyone but if you do have access to your BIOS or you're looking to get into it here are going to be a few pointers in which you should look into researching. You will be seeing anywhere from a 5 to 30 percent FPS increase from optimizing your BIOS correctly and it's one of the most important things you can do alongside tweaking game settings for the best performance. To look into applying a potential all-core overclock. Which esports titles and battle royales which are incredibly CPU bound actually prefer over single core performance? For advanced CPU optimizations if you you're all about getting the most performance possible, it's also worthwhile to turn off any cool and quiet, C states or power saving features on your CPU. For Ryzen users on 3000 or 5000 series chips, you should also look into the CPPC and CPPC preferred core options and have them both disabled. For Intel users, it's also worthwhile to experiment around with turning on or off hyperthreading, which should be available to you on most CPUs. This also goes for Ryzen users, but instead of hyperthreading, this is called SMT. Check that your RAM is installed correctly to your system. If your RAM is not not installed to the correct channels or they're sat next to each other and they're not spaced out correctly running in at least dual channel mode, you are halving your available memory bandwidth. With that then assumed, take yourself into the BIOS section and make sure that your XMP or DOCP memory profile speeds or RAM speeds have been set to the correct ones which are available to you, especially for those of you that have forked out for a relatively decent RAM kit. RAM speeds and timings are incredibly important for battle royale games and esports games as well. If you are looking for a potential upgrade to make to your system and you're really looking for that extra 10 to 20% performance on top of any anyone else out there looking around and finding a decent kit of Samsung B-Die based DDR4. Samsung B-Die chips are the best in the business in terms of overclocking and being able to bring back those timings. GPU optimizations are incredibly vital and can help you reduce micro stuttering issues in which you may be experiencing with inside of the game, game crashes in which you could have from running outdated or slightly corrupt GPU drivers. My first piece of advice for GPU optimizations is to just install the latest graphics card driver available to you. In some cases the latest might not always give you the best performance but it will allow you access to the latest features, which is incredibly important for playing a game such as Apex Legends, which will receive significant content updates at least once every three months. Take yourself down to your taskbar, right click and open Task Manager. Go up to the Performance tab at the top, navigate all the way down on the left hand side, then select your GPU. In here you'll then be able to see the make and model of the GPU in which you're running on, and we can use that information to obtain our latest driver. With that information, take yourself into the description down below, where you'll be able to find both the NVIDIA GeForce drivers and the AMD Radeon driver links. All you'll then simply need to do is click on the driver in which you're going to be updating and install the updates. Now before you update your GPU I'm going to take this opportunity to quickly shout out a video on which I just launched on the channel. This video is going to be sharing with you guys how to de-bloat your drivers and do a complete fresh driver install using the DDU or display driver uninstaller utility. And in my opinion this is my first thing in which I recommend to anyone who's experiencing performance issues on their PC, game crashes or stuttering with inside of games. You can find it in the top right hand side or in the description down below for later. Now assuming that you're running on your latest GPU driver for a quick optimization for every single person and watching even if you haven't updated is to head down into the description down below and download the MSI tool. This is a tool which can allow you to enable or disable message signal based interrupts on your GPU which in incredibly basic terms can help prioritize the GPU with inside of the PCI Express controller. Once you've clicked on the link you'll be brought to this web page. Scroll down to the middle section and you'll be able to download v2 or v3 of the program. I prefer v3, click on the link. Once you're inside of the Mediafire tab select download. To drag this over to your desktop, right click on the file then select run as admin. Select more info, then run anyway. On the left hand side, go to the drop down menu and find your GPU. Once you find this, go to the right hand side and ensure that the MSI box for your GPU has been selected. With that selected, go to the right hand side to the interrupt priority section, go to the drop down menu for your GPU, select high, go to the top right, apply, 
exit out. We can then cover both the best NVIDIA control panel settings and AMD Radeon control panel settings. For this, right click on your desktop and open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel or AMD settings panel. For NVIDIA users, start by going to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Go down to use the advanced 3D image settings, middle option, select this, select apply. Go back over to the left hand side to manage 3D settings. Starting off, you can actually enable image sharpening if you want a slightly sharper image, especially for those of you that aren't planning on playing on your native resolution. Navigate down to low latency mode. We're going to actually be turning this on to ultra. Now, if you are planning on using or are currently using NVIDIA Reflex with inside of the game, NVIDIA Reflex will override this option. But for some of you watching that may experience issues with using NVIDIA Reflex, we can turn it off with inside of the game, but still be able to use NVIDIA ultra low latency by using the low latency mode with inside of the control panel. Power management mode should be set to prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate should be set to highest available. Shader cache size is a new option which is available and what you're going to set this to will depend on how much space you have available on your C drive. If you have about 100 gig or more free, I'd recommend setting your shader cache size to 10 gigabytes. If you don't have much space available, set this to one or if you're not entirely sure, just set this to driver default. Texture filtering and isotropic sample optimizations on. Texture filtering quality should be set to high performance. And lastly, navigate down to vertical sync and ensure this is set to off. With that set up and out of the way, take yourself to the bottom right, select apply. And last but not least, this now leaves us on to GPU overclocking. This is incredibly important and I recommend pretty much every single person watching to try and at least do some research into this. GPU overclocking is incredibly simple and easy to do. You can quite easily extract 5 to 20% extra performance depending on which game you're playing from a small GPU overclock. Do check out the video on the card in the top right hand screen now and also linked in the description down below which you can watch after this video, educate yourself on GPU overclocking and help boost your performance further without having to spend a penny. And that concludes the optimization guide for Apex Escape. Remember, if you have enjoyed this video and have found this useful, please do leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more optimizations or other guides in which I'd recommend, check out the video on screen now.